delivered his wish list for health care before Congress. So now the question is, did it win him the support he needs to push it through? This morning we're joined by two congressmen from Washington. Republican Peter Roskam joins us via satellite. And Democratic Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. joins us on the phone. I want to thank you both for joining us early this morning. And I ask uh, you, Congressman Roskam, the question that's right here on the cover of the Sun-Times. Did the president sell his plan? What do you think? Well, I think his challenge is to move beyond the rhetoric of August. And unfortunately, I think the president should have dropped the, the government-run insurance program. If he had come in and said, we're going to shed this and move on, then I think the country is ready for the pivot, frankly, really for a bipartisan approach. I don't think that he knocked it out of the park in that way. And so the challenge is that he's got 44 members of his own party in the House of Representatives who have said they're not going to vote for a government-run health insurance program. Cut. which makes the obstacle of reform pretty substantive within his own party. Congressman Jackson, let's talk about that. 44 moderate members of the Democratic caucus have gone on the record in opposition of the current bill with the public option. In fact, Congressman John Adler, a Democrat, said the bill that's coming through the House with or without the public option is not good for America. So there seems like there's some infighting within the Democratic Party there in Congress. Do you think the Democrats even have enough votes in the House for this to pass? Well, Jan, I, I certainly think that they do, and I certainly hope uh, that they do, or the 2010 election cycle is going to be very difficult. It's an off-presidential election year, uh, central to the Democratic Party's platform for the last 40 or 50 years uh, has been the idea of universal coverage for all Americans, and the idea that the President of the United States or this Congress, under Democratic control, would back away from covering all Americans would certainly be a form of suicide for, for the Democratic Party. President Obama last night uh, sold the American people on more stability and security, on quality and affordable choices for all Americans, and reining in the costs of health care for our families, our businesses, and our government. And I might also add, David and Jan, I thought his analogy about the capacity of private universities to thrive in the same environment with public universities was an important analogy when talking about health care. Congressman Jackson, do you support a single-payer system? I do support a single-payer system, but I go further than that. I, I think that uh, every American deserves the constitutional right to health care of equal high quality. If we can have the constitutional right to a gun, why not have the constitutional right to get fixed once one gets shot by a gun? And so I go one step further than most Democrats uh, on this question. Congressman Roskam, what do you th what's your response to that? Well, I think if you look at the, at the numbers, particularly coming out of the Congressional Budget Office from a cost point of view, the Congressional Budget Office has said that, in fact, notwithstanding the rhetoric of the President, this is going to be a very expensive plan, H.R. 3200. In fact, so much so that it, it, that it took the breath away from members of the House Ways and Means Committee on both sides of the aisle. So the notion that this is going to break the cost curve, as the President said, just isn't borne out by the facts. And I think there's a whole host of Americans who currently have coverage who are very concerned that they're going to lose their private health insurance if we move to the government option. And but that's I, borne out by study after study. Right. Did they, David, Jan, Go ahead. the president was very clear last night that this won't add a dime to the deficit and it's paid for up front, that it creates an independent commission of doctors and medical experts to identify waste fraud and abuse in the health care system, and it orders an immediate number of demonstration projects in the states, a concession to Republicans uh, for malpractice projects that could help doctors focus on putting their patients first and not practicing defensive medicine because of tort reform. That was a significant step by the president last night. I know he was preaching. Uh, I knew he moved to the choir. I'm hoping that Peter Roskam is going to join us in that effort. Congressman Roskam, what's your response? Well, let me speak to that. I think well, it's one thing to order a study to tell the Secretary of HHS to do a bunch of pilot programs and study things in various states, and it's another thing to reform the tort liability system. If this is the moment that the President has said, if this is the time, as the President has said, then let's not squander it and let's fix the tort liability system. The problem with the issue of cost is that this is the same President in the rhetorical flourish of the campaign who said he was going to go through the federal budget line by line and take things out that were not appropriate but instead he signed a budget that Nancy Pelosi put on his desk that doubles the the national debt in ten in five years and triples that in ten years so the rhetoric notwithstanding on the on the spending side of things 
there is a leeriness on the part of the American public, which is what we saw over August on this cost issue. They're frankly not believing that the administration has the discipline from a cost point of view. Congressman Roscom, uh, Congressman Jackson mentioned that he does support a single payer system. He says he goes further than uh, many Democrats would go and, and that we have basically one system run by the government. W would that be good for America? Well, I don't think a single-payer system is the way to go, frankly. I think that those, those nations that have gone in that direction, um, places like the U.K., places like um, Canada to the north, they've shown um, a real weakness on two areas. One is the, the, the whole notion of cancer survival. If you're going to get breast cancer or prostate cancer in the United States, a much higher survivability rate than in those single-payer systems. And similarly, just, the wait times in those areas. We're running service. out of time. We have to let uh, Congressman Jackson respond, and then we'll have to wrap it up. That's about all the time we have. But Congressman well, Jackson, you'll have the last word on this. Well, well I want to ask you very quickly, too. Congressman Jackson, do you think the current health care bill right now in its form will lead to a single-payer system? Uh, the, the president said that we have long-term goals as Democrats. Uh, we have long-term goals as Americans to cover every American and to take one step at a time. But that reform is necessary right now for families, for our government, and for um, for all Americans to move forward. And so I'm supportive of that. I hope Peter Roskin will work with Democrats in a spirit of civility uh, to get this done for the American people. What we cannot afford is to lose another single American, particularly those who already have insurance, to be denied coverage by big insurance companies. Well, we want to thank both of you for making time for us this morning. Obviously, a story that we will continue to follow in the days ahead.